Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody got a handout. If not, our lovely ushers will make sure you got one. Just raise your hand and they'll hook you up. Or if you need your coffee refilled or anything like that, they'll be sure to... Right? We might follow it. If I don't fill all the blanks, then see me afterwards and I'll... uh, you know, I'll tell you what the blanks were supposed to be filled with. Uh, real quick announcement. This Wednesday night, uh, we have an ice cream social. Weather's going to be perfect. We'll be out here on the north property. Uh, ice cream's going to be provided, some of the toppings, but bring some more toppings and a dessert or pie, and we'll just get all sugared up, all right? Uh, going to have a short devotion, maybe a little worship time, and just a cornhole fun, all right? It's not like paying for a tournament or anything like that. We'll just make it, if you win, you keep playing. How's that sound, all right? And we'll see who's still standing at the end. If you got a cornhole set, bring them. Uh, we'll have a few here already, but uh, come on out. It's just for fun, fellowship, and enjoy our time together. Amen? The Wednesday after that, we start with dinners and all that stuff. So one more Wednesday, and we're going to celebrate with an ice cream social. I've been doing a series just entitled The Invitation. And I started with Come and See. And we saw the disciples of John the Baptist when they met Jesus going to the others and saying, come and see. And I remember the woman at the well, this could be a whole other sermon in this series, who after she met Jesus, encountered him at the well, ran to the city and said, what? Come and see. And really evangelism is that simple. It's not having to ram anything down anybody's throat. It's just inviting them to come and see. Now, once you come and see, something begins to happen. You encounter Jesus and you begin to come and be. We're so good at coming and doing. We, you are great doers. Give yourselves a hand. I would have given you a better one than that. Let's try it again. Give yourselves a hand. (laughs) You know, you're you're incredible givers. You know, 180 beds, you know, has been sent for the money's been sent for that. And they're going to have beds and mattresses when we arrive there in November uh, just to see their beds. You you gave a raise to 16 teachers, right, at the uh, Bahati School in Uganda. Uh, You continue to give and the food pantry and for these facilities. And so thank you. You you are great doers and great givers, and I thank you so much for that. But before we do, it's important that we be. You do what you do because of what you think of you. This is just how it starts. As a man or a woman thinks within themselves, that's the way they are. And so God's still working on me, right? But I've got a little better understanding of who I am in Christ and what that means. So it's interesting how two people can experience basically the same thing. And one person lives their life as a victim and another person will live their life as an overcomer. You'll do what you do because of what you think of you. So when I go to see Brother John at the Four Square Church, I don't walk into the pornography shop that's right next door to it. Why? Because I say to myself, I'm Pastor Kurt. You know, one of my church members might be in there and see me. (laughs) Praise, Praise God. Praise God, no. Right? But we do what we do because of what you think of you. Shameful people will continue to live shamefully. And the truth is, I I was visiting with an old friend this past week. Just enjoyed our time together. And uh, he was talking about how he met his wife. And he met her at a bar and she was the designated driver. And I I just use that to share with him how Jesus is sort of the designated driver in life. We've all blown it. 
we've all lost our license. But Jesus is the only one God has designated to be the driver through life. And if you're with Jesus, you're going to be all right. Without him, your life's a wreck. Amen? So in the beginning, God created us in his image. He looked at the first man and woman and says, it's good. But then we messed it up. A little thing called sin is an I problem, S-I-N. They saw it available to them, the tree of life. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which basically was this. Are you going to let God decide for you what's right or wrong, or are you going to decide for yourself? And they just said, we're going to decide for ourselves what's right or wrong. And when they did that, they sinned. And they fell short of God's glory. In other words, they were no longer in the image of God. But God had a plan to restore it. So we get through the Old Testament, we finally get to the Gospels. We're in the Gospels now in the Bible Project. We're in the Gospel of Matthew. Hallelujah. Aren't you? Is anybody in Matthew with me? Hallelujah. God sent Jesus. And when I received Jesus, I become full of His hope and full of glory. And I begin to be changed from glory into glory. God's purpose in all of this is to make us like Jesus. To give us life. Jesus said, I came that you might have life. He comes to give us something we don't have and we can't have apart from Him. Well, I'm, I feel alive, but you're not experiencing His kind of life. And so salvation is becoming like Jesus. Salvation is becoming a new creation. Not just a restoration, a new creation. Now I got a, I got a new attitude. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, have this attitude, right? So I got a new attitude. I, I, got, a new, I got a new walk. Daddy got a new bag. I don't know how that works. I'll give up on that. But anyway, that, that might have been a bad thing. I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? There's a change. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants to change you. And there's some areas of your life you need to change. And it's this process. God sent Jesus to make us like Jesus. Read a couple passages again I left in here from last week. For those who He foreknew, He also predestined to become conformed to the image of His Son. Right? My children, Paul writes, with whom again I am in labor until Christ is formed in you. And Jesus says, follow me and I will make you to what? Become something. Fishers of men. God brings people to Jesus through people that are filled with Jesus. Isn't that crazy? But that's what he does. People are first attracted to us and preferably the Jesus that's in us and we connect them with them. We create opportunities for them to be encountered by him. So you do what you do because of what you think of you. And our stinking thinking needs to be changed. And the only way to change your life is to change your words, change your thoughts. I read this somewhere this week. Be careful what you think, for your thoughts become your actions. Be careful of your actions, for they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character because that becomes your destiny. Where does it all start? What I think. And we're bad thinkers. Sin does that to us. God wants to transform and renew our minds. And the only way to do that is to receive the Spirit of Jesus. God gives me the Spirit of Jesus to make me like Jesus. Now, that involves an encounter. And I, I want to read one of my favorite passages of Scripture. I know I say that about every verse and chapter. This is one of my favorite stories. This picture hangs in my office. Behold, two men were going that very day from Jerusalem to a city named Emmaus. It's about seven miles from Jerusalem. 
While they were talking with each other about all these things which had taken place, Jesus had just been crucified, he died. While they were still talking and discussing, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them. This is after his crucifixion. This is the third day. It's Sunday. And Jesus is walking with them, and it says, But their eyes were prevented from seeing him. We'll talk about that in a moment. He said to them, What are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you're walking? And they stopped and looked at him and said, Man, where have you been? I mean, are you the only one that hasn't heard about what's gone on in the city of Jerusalem? Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem unaware of the things which have happened in these days? And Jesus says, what thanks? So they're talking to Jesus, telling Jesus about the things that happened to... (laughs) Isn't that great? And they said to him, well, the things about Jesus, the Nazarene, he was a prophet. Be careful what you say about Jesus. He just might be, he might be listening. The things about Jesus the Nazarene, he was a prophet, a mighty indeed, and word inside of God, and all the people, and how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to the sentence of death, and they crucified him. And we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it's the third day since these things have happened. And we're hearing rumors of women have amazed us. They went to the tomb early in the morning and they didn't find his body and they came saying that he had risen. They'd seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and and found it exactly as the women also had said, but but him they didn't see. And, And Jesus stops and he says, Oh, you foolish men. Oh, you foolish men. And slow of heart to believe. In all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into glory? Then beginning with Moses, that's the law, Genesis, Exodus, Vision, and Deuteronomy, and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. In all the scriptures. And they approached the village where they were going, and he acted as though he was going further. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it's getting toward evening, and and the day is now nearly over. So he went to stay with them. And when he reclined at the table with them, he took the bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he began giving it to them and giving thanks. And then, then their eyes were opened, they recognized him, and then he vanished from their sight. They said to one another, Were not our hearts burning? Within us, while he was speaking to us, while he was explaining the scriptures to us. So they got up that very hour. They returned to Jerusalem, the seven miles back in the dark. They found gathered together the eleven and those who were with them, saying, The Lord has really risen, and it's happened to Simon. They began to relate their experiences on the road and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. The only way to become like Jesus is to encounter Jesus. I think next week I'll talk more specifically about what those encounters can look like. But it's encountering Jesus. You see, the disciples were on their way to Emmaus talking about current events. And it says their eyes were prevented from seeing him. Why? It was because, not that their physical eyes couldn't see, but because of the unbelief in their hearts to believe what the scriptures said. Well, we searched the scriptures. We thought for sure this was the one who was going to redeem Israel. But he died. Gosh, if you'd have read, and if you'd listened to the words of Jesus, he said, I will die. But three days later, I'm going to what? Do you believe that? 
do you believe Jesus is alive? Do you really believe the eternal Son of God, the name that is above all names, the name at which every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess, the the name of the one who's coming back someday to judge the quick and the dead and to establish His kingdom and to rule forever and ever. Do you really believe that dude that lived here over 2,000 years ago was crucified, had a sword thrust into his side, was laid into a tomb. Do you really believe that dude raised over 2,000 years ago and he's still alive today? Yes. You bunch of weirdos. Of course I do. Thank God you are. How, that's what it's all about, isn't it? But see, they'd lost faith. So Jesus, you foolish men. I mean, you read the Scriptures, but you didn't believe the Scriptures. And I find too many people wanting to throw out the Bible. I found too many people not having a love affair with the Bible. I found too many people getting lazy. Oh, there I go. I'm just being a... Saying I'm too busy to read the Bible. But I've got to tell you, Jesus reveals Jesus through the word of Jesus. You've got to know that. It's not about just reading history. It's not just about reading some facts. It's not about just a little devotion. It's not about making me feel better for the day or arming myself with verses so I can beat you over the head with them. It's about encountering the great lover of my soul and the one who I was made for and who I long to be with and who I long to be like to those who believe Jesus is precious. Have you encountered Him? Have you had that? Burning heart. A.W. Tozer referred to it as the, the fellowship of the burning heart. And then I loved what he said at the end of his book, The Pursuit of God. He said, and though my flame may not be large, yet it is real. And I pray that there are those who can come and be inspired and warmed by it. Amen. You see, salvation isn't just about us. God wants to build his church, but he does it through people. Who did you invite today? How many people did you invite to come and see this week? That's your assignment from Jesus. Come and see. Not the crazy preacher on the stage, but in spite of that crazy preacher and that worship band, I encountered Jesus there. Amen? Two or more gathered in his name, and he was there, and I just I felt the presence of the Lord. Amen. So notice Jesus starts with, with Moses and the laws and the prophets. See, that's why we're encouraged at HCC to read the whole Bible. Because the whole Bible tells me. Who Jesus is. I had this years ago. I I don't have time to go through the whole thing. We've done it on Wednesday nights when we read through in Genesis. In Genesis, he's the seed of woman in Exodus. He's the Passover lamb in Leviticus. He's our high priest. In Numbers, he's the pillar of the cloud by day and the pillar of fire. Pillar of fire by night. He's a prophet like unto Moses and Joshua. He's the commander of the Lord's army and judges. He is our judge and our lawgiver. And Ruth, he's the kinsman, redeemer. And Sir, and Second Samuel, he's the seed. I go on and on and on. All the way through. I like to summarize it like this, though. He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He's the keeper of creation and the creator of all. He is the architect of the universe and the manager of all times. He always was, always is, and always will be. Unmoved, unchanged, undefeated, but never undone. He was bruised and brought healing. He was pierced and eased pain. He was persecuted and brought freedom. He was dead and brought life. He is risen and brings power. He reigns and brings peace. The world can't understand him. The armies can't defeat him. School can't explain him. Leaders can't ignore him. 
ignore him. Herod couldn't kill him. Pharisees couldn't confuse him. The grave couldn't hold him. Nero couldn't crush him. Hitler couldn't silence him. Other religions can't replace him. And the world can't explain him away. He is light, love, longevity, and Lord. He is goodness, kindness, gentleness, and God. He is holy, righteous, mighty, powerful, and pure. He always was right. He is the eternal word. He his will is unchanging and His mind is on us. He is my Redeemer, my Savior, my Guide, my Peace, my Joy, my Comfort, my Lord. That's just a small summary. And where did I get that? The B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Remember the song last week? He's still working on me. To make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the moon and Jupiter and Mars. How patient and loving he must be. He's still working on you. Amen. Now God uses his word to make us like Jesus. We worship now in spirit and in truth. Jesus reveals Jesus to me in His Word. You can come listen to a preacher, and that's good, and that's fine. Thank you. But this preacher just wants to encourage you to do one thing. Go see Jesus. (laughs) He's waiting. Just open the door to success. And start real. I can't understand it. It's all right. Give Him some time. Maybe start with John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And let Jesus say, this is me. This is who I am. This is what I've done for you. Amen. Oh, foolish men. And so he starts right there in the Scriptures. And he shows them everything concerning himself. And they began to encounter him. Now evening's coming and they're, he's acting like he's going to go on. And it says they urge him to stay. Have you ever had a conversation with Jesus you never wanted to end? Have you ever encountered Jesus in such a way you said, Lord, I don't want this ever to end? You see, I pray you have an encounter with Jesus that becomes a daily fellowship with Jesus. I remember one of my first encounters, and I've had many, but the one that stands out I've talked about before. I was at church camp, Lake Afton, and Joy Rhodes was up singing. I don't remember the message. I don't remember anything. Except every night, Joy Rhodes got up and sang, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And there was just a burning. There was something in my heart, something in my spirit that says, I've just got to go forward. And I remember my best buddy, Mark, sitting there saying, and I said, Mark, I just got to go forward. And he says, I thought we were going fishing. Because right after chapel was free time, you know what I'm saying? If you go down there, we ain't going to have as much time to... Isn't it funny? And I won't talk about the two different paths of life that we have now. But isn't it funny? I went forward, and now I'm a fisher of men. (laughs) Hallelujah. I remember my last night in Singapore. I just spent some time alone on the beach. And this fisherman came. He just started casting out sunset. And just Lord saying, you're going to be what? Fisher of men. I remember when I was in Hong Kong and I'm with one of our missionary friends. And it's my last night. And he says, Hey, you want some snake? I'll go, Sure, let's go eat some snake. So we're downtown Hong Kong trying to find some snake. And a group uh, of guys from St. Stephen's Society out giving rice boxes to the homeless on the street, um, they stop and one of them's looking at me. I see him just kind of staring at me and I'm like, and as we started to go, he, he, he pulled me over and he, said, and he stopped me and he says, the Lord just gave me a picture for you. 
Okay, I'm on the other side of the world, don't know this person from Adam. And he don't know me from Adam. But God told him something. And in faith, he stepped out with that mustard seed and spoke it into me. And it was powerful and it was positive. And I knew it was the Lord because I just, again, I just had that. It, I want to say it broke me, right? That was a good thing to just break us out of that, that hard pan. If, if you're a farmer, you know what the hard pan is, don't you? And sometimes you've got to break up that fallow ground. So uh, maybe golfers, maybe it helped that you aerate, right? You've got to poke some holes there to get some aeration going. God just kind of broke it open and, and, and I just received more of His Spirit into my... It was another encounter. And, um, you know, Bruce is walking off and I'm standing there. He turns around and comes like, what's wrong? And I'm bawling like a baby. How many of you know that sometimes when you encounter God, you just cry like a baby? But you're not sad. <laughs> you're full of joy. I'm just so full of joy. i got to cry. <laughs> joy leaks out sometimes. Can I get an amen? <laughs> In different ways. So I cried when my babies were born. Hallelujah. Tears of joy. And so the only way to encounter Jesus is to position yourself. He responds to the Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Jesus says, Father, I've made your name known to them and I'm going to make it known. And I'm praying that the love with which you, the way you've loved me, I'm praying that you would put that love in them so that they can love me the way you love me. You see, God wants to put something in your heart. Romans 5.5, 5, the love of God is poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God wants to make us lovers. We heard this yesterday at men's group. Love God. Love people. Love yourself. And that's a work of the Holy Spirit. I love people enough to say, come and see. I love the woman at the well. It says she left her pot. Jesus had spoken to her about living water. She left her source to go tell people about the real source which was Jesus Christ. Have you left your pot? Have you left your way of doing things? What you put your hope and trust in and found the one who is the Messiah, your Redeemer, the one that came to give you life and wants to spend eternity with you and invites you to sit on His throne and invites you to rule and reign with Him in partnership all of life right now is training for that moment. We're learning to rule ourselves so that one day we can rule in His kingdom. John the Baptist had it right when he prayed, I got to decrease. He's got to increase. How many of you say you're about half full? <laughs> How many of you might be three quarters full? How many of you say, I need, to, I need to be overflowing? Hallelujah. Lord, I want to be overflowing with your love and the knowledge of your grace and forgiveness and the fullness of your spirit and the fullness of joy because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And once I get it, like these early disciples, I'm going to say, Lord, stay. And it's okay, I'll stay. All I need is an invitation. It's an amazing thing. The king of glory, who has every right to march in and demand, says, no, I'm just going to give you glimpses of my goodness and my glory. But if you really want to experience the fullness of life, you just have to invite me. Now, some of you take notes on this real quick. This is important. You need to write this down. Some of you I know want to invite me and my wife to dinner. <laughs> and all I need is a... <laughs> a. Some of you I know want to take me out for pie and coffee. I know you do. 
and you didn't know how, all I need is a... Isn't that easy? Isn't that great? <laughs> Amen? Yes! Thank you, brother. After, let's do it. Hallelujah. I like the way you're thinking. I will come and see. And then I will come and be. And then I better go and do. <laughs> Amen. But I want to be fat with the glory. And so I invite Jesus. And I just, I heard somebody talk about the armor of God one time, you know. And man, they got up every morning, they prayed it on. I got to pray on the helmet of salvation. I got to pray on the breastplate of righteousness. I got to pray on the belt of truth. I got to la, 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 la. And one preacher finally said, just don't take it off. <laughs> See, we, we want to do, 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 do. No, when you understand who you be, you know that you are. It's time to rise up and be warriors in Christ, armed with the gospel of truth and love, sharing the truth. Creating opportunities for people to come and see and experience Jesus. Because once you do, you'll say, don't leave. Just stay. And, and you'll pick up and you'll just... Uh. I'll tell you, it's as simple sometimes. I love this prayer out of the Psalm 23. You just begin to pray this prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. shall not want. Just try that prayer sometimes. And I promise you the Holy Spirit will fall on you when you get to the part where you say, I shall not want because as a 21st century American male, I want, 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 want. You know, I got a Harley, I need a new Harley. I got a gold wing, I don't need any other bike. You know, I want a new bike. I want some new golf clubs. I want, I want to be 20 pounds lighter. I want, to, I want to be as good looking as Willie down. You see what I'm saying? I want, I want, I want. Right? It's a great prayer. Lord, you are my leader. You are my guide. You're taking me through this day. Try it. I shall not want because the one who makes Jesus their treasure finds they have everything in life worth having. Now, I might have to have other things to live and to survive and to get by on. But I learned to live simply in order that others might simply live. Amen. And when you have Jesus and He's precious, you have this treasure. And this encounter becomes a fellowship that you have 24-7. And He walks with me and he talks with me and he so that changes how I think how I act and how I live my utmost for his highest the whole premise of that book is what would Jesus do <laughs> and it's just learning to love and live like Jesus I'm, I'm kind of wanting to tweak our motto, all about love, to living and loving like Jesus. Amen? That's what we're called to do, but we need Jesus to do it. And when we are, you hear a whistle from Jesus. Did you hear it? <whistles> Try it. I see Jesus in you. Jesus reveals Himself to us through the Word. Let me read this. I wrote it out here. You've got it at the bottom of your page. To encounter God is to have your inner spirit refined and redirected in such a way that completely changes your life. To encounter God is to be welcomed into His all-consuming presence. To encounter God is to discover who you were made to be and who He has always seen you as. That's important. God doesn't just relate to you where you are, broken and weak. He sees who you will one day be in Him, and He responds to you according to your destiny. Just get up every morning, say yes to Him. Say yes, man. I want to do a sequel to that movie, Yes, Man. But do it with the spiritual. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Will you invite somebody to church next week? Man, thank you, Rick. It, it only takes a spark <laughs> to get a fire going. 
Would you invite somebody next week to come and see? Yes. Ma'am. See, it's catching. How about the rest of you? Yes. Yes. Why wouldn't you? Do you know he's alive and he's real? I think it all goes back to that, doesn't it? There is there still hardness and unbelief in our hearts? Well, I think there is. Maybe there is. Or you sold out because you've... Folks, I've encountered the living Lord, and he's alive. He's alive! He really is alive, and he's coming back. They encountered Christ and his word. They desired to know more. Their hearts burned within them. I love this. I'm almost done. Did not our hearts burn within us? You see, there was something there. Now, an encounter is an encountering a force. It's encountering a person, and this is important. People can have encounters without Christ. You can, you can have emotional encounters. We, we can weep, we can be happy, we can be sad, we can, we can um, you know, be emotional at a movie. Um, you can forget that you went to a Taylor Swift concert. I guess because of the emotional experience, right? Did you hear that? Is that why you, you forget the sermon sometimes? You just have such a... <laughs> but there's a response. You're made for Jesus. You're wired for Jesus. I like this again. Just look at your neighbor and say, you're, you're wired. <laughs> and when you get connected with his life, are you ready for this? I haven't done it yet today. Tell mom it's coming. There's power! <laughs> power. Which isn't a force... It's a relationship. It's a relationship. This is different. You see, Luke Skywalker uses the force. Pastor Kurt lives in the Spirit. And that one's real. Can I get an amen? amen. There is no try, only do. Does this help? What am I doing? Get back here. <laughs> Yoda okay with that? All right. Hearts burned within them. And they went and told others, hey, we, we encountered the Lord. We, we've seen the Lord. And he disappeared. Why? This is important. And this is why Jesus was revealing Jesus through the word. Did you understand? You've got to catch this point. He didn't just say, hey, it's me. He showed them in the scriptures, because that's how he was going to work until his return. Because blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe, and we are called now to walk by faith and not by sight. And so we don't necessarily physically see resurrected Jesus because he sent it back to the Father and said, I'm sending my spirit so I can reproduce myself a thousand times, a million times, a billion times. And I will reveal myself to you through the Spirit. I found this on the web. <laughs> I don't even have my phone on me. It's my watch. Thank you. Thank you, Siri. I didn't know where I was. <laughs> the world's always trying to interrupt. Right? Squirrel! <laughs> and I'm back with Jesus. I'm back with Jesus. I, I close with this. Hmm. It's always a sound, isn't it? It's a world we live in. Every day on the news, somebody's getting shot, somebody's crashing or stealing, or another fire's burning somewhere else, and stuff's going on, and this world's heating up. But 
Jesus told us it would. And I've told you, you don't have to worry about what's coming. Just make sure you know the one who's coming. And that's Jesus. You don't have to be afraid. But caca, we're living in a day and an age when Jesus builds his church through the church, which is people. And we just need to have the fire of God burning within us. Have that encounter which leads to a fellowship with Him daily. I don't seek encounters. But as I seek Him in the Word and in fellowship, and He just shows up sometimes in unexpected places and incredible, powerful ways, and sometimes gentle waves. At times He's in the whisper, right? At times He's in the wave. At times He's in the glorious sunrise or sunset. But He shows up. He's always been there. He always has been. All of my life. And I've been very blessed. I was raised in a Christian home. I saw Jesus working in the life of my father, my mother, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles. I saw Jesus in the small community and what that's like. And there's just a lot of you and young people that have none of those experiences. You've been raised maybe in broken homes. You question whether or not God was good, if He loved you at all. You do what you do because of what you think of you. And the world will tell you who you are until you let Jesus tell you who you are. Precious. Worth dying for. (laughs) Worth living for. Just close your eyes for a moment. Jesus, you're as close as the mention of your name. Jesus, would you reveal yourself to the hearts of your people here, maybe even for the first time today, Right now, somebody feels that still, small whisper in their heart. Jesus knocking on the door, saying, if you'll open it and let me come in, I'll make all things new. And then if you'll seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, everything else you worry and stress about in life will just be added unto you. So maybe for the first time, somebody's going to say, yes, Jesus. I invite you. Come. Lord, that's our prayer. If we've said yes to you, we just continue to make this our prayer. Less of me, more of you. Father, would you mend and heal broken hearts this morning? Would you break the bondage of addictions? Would you restore families? Would you build strong homes? We love you, Lord, and we thank you for your patience with us. You're a good shepherd. I shall not want anything except you. So more of you. Increase my thirst. And increase my fire. And my longing for your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Let's stand and sing this together. If you prayed that prayer for the first time to let Jesus in, see me after the service. I'm not going to do anything weird. I'm just going to talk to you about what it means to follow Jesus now and to grow in Him. But here's the invitation. All who are thirsty, all who are weak, come to the fountain. 
Dip your heart in the stream of life. Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the ways of His mercy. As deep cries out to Here's the invitation. We say, come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. All who are thirsty, and all who are weak, all you got to do is come to the fountain. Lead your pot. Come to the fountain. Dip your heart in the stream of life. Let all the pain and the sorrow, let it be washed away in the ways of His mercy. As he cries out to Jesus, we sing, come, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Won't you come, Lord Jesus, come, come. we thank you that all you need is an invitation and so we invite you to come fill us with your spirit with your hope with your purpose with your power with your love and thank you father for what you do in our lives you now open our eyes to see the world around us in need of what we just experienced Father, I pray this week that you would put in front of everybody here at least three different people that they will have an opportunity to say, come and see. And they'll go for it because people need that invitation. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for letting us be part of your church, your body. I ask a blessing on everyone here. May they go in the fullness and may they not leak. And I pray they'll experience the God who says, I will do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all you ever ask or think. Come to me and drink and be filled. I am the vine, you're the branches. If you abide in me, ask whatever you will. It will be done for you. All things will work together for good for you. And you will be able to do all things through Christ and for my glory. Say, that's who I am. That's who I am. I'm not just a child of the king. I'm a warrior for the king. I've been baptized, born again. I'm spirit-filled. I'm being changed from glory unto glory. Hallelujah. My destiny is set and secure. I belong to Jesus. And Jesus belongs to me. <laughs> I don't know where that's coming from. Who's doing that? Let's try it. And Jesus looks good in you. Amen. Let me hear it. Come on, everybody. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for making us beautiful. And we're going to go live beautiful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, come back Wednesday. We're going to have uh, some ice cream and some cornhole.
I don't know if I'm going to do this or not, but I go through seasons. I've been writing a bunch of new songs. I might just do some new songs for you as the Lord laid on my heart that night. So you must be present to win or be tortured, whatever. So Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, come out. And uh, if you need to connect with me, talk a bit more about Jesus, or invite me to dinner or, or uh, coffee and pie, hey, you know, I'm, I'm available. So God bless y'all. Go be like Jesus.